the radio takes 0.18 amps, 180 milliamps on receive with the squelch closed. 220 milliamps with the squelch open and on high power 2.6 amps which isn't too bad. If that is generating 17 watts output that's fairly efficient. The radio draws 8.9 milliamps when switched off so that is not insignificant if you leave this in a vehicle for any length of time it will flatten the battery but then again you'll you'll probably have it wired through the um, accessory switch um, but it's just a warning if you leave this plugged in on the uh, on the cigarette lighter mind you there again cigarette lighters are on the accessory switch aren't they forget to forget what I'm talking about well I have managed to uh, program several channels in from the front panel without having to use programming software uh, so what do I think of the thing turn it on unfortunately it comes back on the, the last channel that you left it on now that's fine but if you remember what what the last channel was that you left it on but there's absolutely no indication as you step up and down the channels as to which one is channel one so imagine you are uh, operating blind you've just turned the radio on what channel are you on you don't know you cannot operate this thing without being able to see what channel you're on or remember the last channel you're on it would have been nice if they made it default to channel one when you switch it on or if there's some way of resetting it so that it always came on at channel one let's test the audio quality I shall just uh, wander out of range of the camera and uh, see what the audio sounds like. Uh, it doesn't sound too bad to me. It's quite a lot of top response. Um, and the noise is actually coming off this, uh, this handheld. Now I'll try and do this without, uh, without getting too much bleed through of my voice onto the uh, recording device. Testing, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three, testing, testing. Notice how when I drop the carrier, there's a slight delay. So, um, yeah, over. And uh, I don't know whether the, uh, the microphone clunks are uh, coming across. Audio doesn't sound too bad to me at all. If you talk directly into the microphone, you get to a lot of popping, so it's best to talk across it, but fairly close. This is a test of the audio quality. Now I'm speaking at normal microphone volume, and uh, across the microphone, quite close. Now I'll turn it so I'll speak directly into the microphone like that and you'll probably hear a lot of breath popping. So uh, I don't recommend talking directly into it. It's better to talk across it like that. Now I'm going to try um, moving the microphone away a little bit. So this is the microphone at about 9 inches and that's at about a foot and a half. Okay. Huh?
just did this in the in the bright sunlight and uh, we could still read it except we couldn't see the the leads up the side but as you can see um, you can read the display in the dark you can see the buttons and uh, you can't see the volume knob and I don't think it illuminates no it doesn't but the uh, you can now see the light when you transmit and you can see the green leads when the squelch opens so uh, it is sort of usable in the dark <laughs>